filming right in front of a window, so I'm just kind of like, who's spying on me right now? Hi, hello, welcome to this channel where things happen sometimes and other times they don't happen. And that's okay. <laughs> if you don't know who I am, which, you, why would you? My name is Joanna and here we talk about books when I decide to read them and you decide to listen to me talk about said books. So last year, around this time, I posted this video and I was wearing the same onesie and that video was simply just... It was chef's kiss. It was the best video I've ever posted, probably the best video I'll ever post. Go watch it. Anyway, so that video was talking about all the books that I read back in 2019. So I decided for the end of the amazing year that is 2020, I'll put my onesie back on, we'll sit here and we'll talk about all the books that I read in 2020. Last year I did it while cooking, but this year the thing is like, to your lists. So that's what we're doing. So I think my screen is filming. I have my laptop right here. I think my screen is filming. So let's get right into it. So here I have all the books that I read in 2020, except like some rereads and a few books that were just kind of the random ERGs that I found on either NetGalley or the other one that I just wanted to read so my score wouldn't be so bad. So those aren't here. <laughs> so let me introduce you to my amazing categories. The best of the best is simping. Self-explanatory. Second one, great fun. This book wasn't the best book I've ever read. It didn't change my life in any way. But it was great fun. Third category, just okay. I think these are kind of like the meh books. The three stars or the I don't know what to say about this book or how to review it because it was just just okay. Fourth category, it's a no from me. Maybe it's a yes from you, but it's a no from me. And fifth category is just a trash emoji. I'm kind of like nervous to talk about the books. Like I read some of these in like January. So sorry if I don't remember anything about them. Just trust me when I say they're good or they're bad. Or you know what, don't trust me at all. I'm sure you loved the books that I hated and you hated the books that I loved and that's okay. Okay, so first let's talk about Vicious. I read Vicious earlier this year and I really enjoyed it. However, I just finished Vengeful Like, Vengeful Like three days or something ago. And it soured, no spoilers, but it soured my feelings for Vicious a little bit. But overall, I think Vicious was great fun. I have this thing with V, v Schwab books that I really like them all, but they're never, they never quite make it to like my favorites. I don't know why. I can never like explain why I didn't quite like them enough to make it a favorite. I don't know. But since we are in the V Schwab train, train, we can go with this Savage song, which was also great fun. I think this this Savage song is YA and Vicious is adults. So this Savage song is like Victoria Schwab. I don't know. I don't, I always forget. I honestly feel like these books are very similar. In All of Victoria Schwab's books are very similar in tone. Only Vicious is an adult and this Savage song is a YA. So it's like the toned down version of Vicious, but it was cool and I liked it. <laughs> okay, let's leave Vengeful for later because yikes. Let's just, let's go with Saga. I love Saga a lot. I think this is, this and the Sander, which is that here, maybe? Oh, and Nimona. Okay, so I loved all the graphic novels I read this year. I think I'm gonna put Saga in Simping because I was reading it and I just I felt it in my bones and the art style is really cool it's not like my favorite I prefer the Descender art style I just think the characters in Saga are just and I can't wait to see where the story goes I only read the first volume this year I have the second one and the reason I haven't read it I talked about this before but I feel bad reading graphic novels because they're so expensive and then Saga is so long, so I just, I feel stressed. Also, they're banging something upstairs, so if you can hear it, sorry. Please shut up, thank you. Okay, sorry. 
Okay, let's go with the sender. I prefer the first volume to the second one. And my reasoning for this is I don't remember what happened in the second one. I remember the ending. But besides that, I don't remember what happened. So I think that's good enough reason to not put it in simping and put it in great fun. It was great fun. I love the sender. The sender is about this baby robot. Not a baby, like this child robot who wakes up and suddenly all the humans are gone and everyone is gone from his planet and he has to try and find out what happened. And I love my, my, my child, like that's my son. But I preferred the first volume to the second one. The Little Prince. The Little Prince is like a classic. I had read The Little Prince before, but I was really young, so I just put it here anyway. I read it for a readathon. I think I vlogged it. The Owls. I think that's what I read it for. I think everyone should read The Little Prince. It's a very short classic and it has a very nice message and the way the story is told is quite interesting but I don't think I can put it in great fun just because of how short it is and how... I don't want to say childish but like childlike it is. I think I'm gonna put it in just okay but I do love The Little Prince. But I love it in a... not an enjoyment way, I love it in like an aesthetic way. This year list is mostly just based on enjoyment, so this isn't like five stars, four stars, blah, 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 blah. This is just how much I enjoyed the experience of reading the book. Next we have Magic of Thieves by... I have no idea who this is by. I read this for Owls as well. It was one of those either free or like 99, 99 cents Kindle ebooks. E Why did I say that so weird? Ebooks? But... It was, it was, is it a no for me? Uh, I don't think it's a, it was very short. It was very, no, I'm gonna put it in just okay. I don't think it's a no for me. I remember, what do I remember about it? Maybe it is a no for me, I don't remember anything about it. It was about this girl who had magic and their parents got killed and then she got taken in by like this gang. Kind of like this, I don't, I don't remember what it's called. Like they attack people who are traveling on the streets and like steal their shit. I think that's, yeah, I think I think it's just okay. I, I might continue the series actually. And then there was a weird romance, I don't know. We'll leave it in just okay for now. Then we have Through the Woods. Again, this is a graphic novel and beautiful. This is the most beautiful art style I've ever seen in my entire life beautiful but I didn't find it that scary this is a horror-ish graphic novel but I I don't know I just don't find drawings that unsettling or that scary I'm a sound person for like scary things so I think it was just okay the art style is beautiful I wish I could like plaster all the pages all over my wall still beautiful Wanted Dead or In Love by... I don't remember who this is by. I don't want to talk about this book. <laughs> okay, 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 so... Wanted Dead... <laughs> I honestly... I kind of want to pretend this book didn't exist. Because I feel embarrassed talking about it. God, okay. So, Wanted Dead or In Love. I need to find out. Kim Bruner, I think? Let's find out that not alive or in love. Kim Brunner, my brain. Okay, so what did that do in love? It's about a girl whose dad has. Is it a restaurant? Yeah, he has a restaurant and he collects a bunch of gang mem memorabilia from the, from the Great Depression and everything. And, and at an auction, this man buys one of the <laughs> Why did I read this? This man buys one of the bullets that killed Bonnie and Clyde, most specifically Bonnie. And he takes it home. This girl who is our protagonist is like, oh my god, this is the best thing I've ever seen, which is honestly mood. And she, her father warns her like, oh, don't touch the bullet, don't like it's 
this is an expensive memorabilia, I guess. And she doesn't give a single shit apparently, and she she opens. I can't. She opens the casing that the bu the bullet is in, and she touches it, and I think like she cuts her finger on it or something. Long story short, the spirit of Bonnie Parker <laughs> from Bonnie and Clyde enters her body, and so she starts. <laughs> I can give a straight face. She starts hearing Bonnie speak inside her head. I don't know, honestly. I I have no words. She starts listening to Bonnie speak inside her head, and Bonnie's like, "We gotta find Clyde." That's not a Texan accent. I don't know what that was. We gotta find Clyde, and somehow I don't even remember how this happened. This other boy gets the spirit of Clyde inside him. That sounds weird. He gets like possessed. Like they're possessed, basically, and their bodies start shifting so not only can they hear can this girl hear bonnie inside her head and this other guy hears clyde inside his head th their bodies kind of like shift so the spirits can take over and so then it turns into kind of a road trip story and there's police involved and there's it's a lot i have been wanting to read this book probably since like 2017 and I finally bought it and I finally read it and I hated and loved every single minute of it so I don't know how to rate this is it bad like from a technical standpoint and from a reviewer literature point standpoint is it bad yes it is did I love it yes I did I give it like two stars. I think I gave it two stars, but I, it was fucking hilarious. I, I was having so much fun reading this book. And then my favorite, my favorite thing about books is when they make you feel something. This book made me feel mad. <laughs> I, I was reading this book and I was thinking, this is not a good portrayal of Bonnie and Clyde because I'm a fucking nerd. I'm a fucking nerd. So I don't know where to put this. Like, technically, it needs to go into just okay. Like, technically, it does. But I had so much fucking fun. I know. This is like, it's a yes for me and a no for everyone else in existence. If you're a Bonnie and Clyde connoisseur, read this. Moving on. God, then I read... This iconic books left and right. Then I read Say Yes to the Marquess by Tessa Dare. Say Yes to the Marquess is about this woman who had an engagement to this man who's always traveling. So they never kind of get married and she's starting to get annoyed by the fact that they never get married. And she's like, I'm gonna break off the engagement. And everyone around her is, oh, you can't, because this is a circle romance. So everyone around her is like, oh, don't do that. And she's like, I'm gonna do it. But this man's brother, comes in and is like, bitch, don't do it. And she's like, why? I want to do it. And, and he explains that he needs his brother to marry her so that he can, can take over their family's business because he just wants to fight and doesn't want to have anything to do with that. So they make kind of like an agreement that he is going to try his best to plan this amazing wedding for this girl and her fiance. Obviously, things go awry and it was great fun. I, I think that explanation made absolutely no sense. It's been a while since I've read it, but this was the first historical romance I've ever read and I really liked it. I, I think I enjoy historical romances more than I enjoy just adult contemporary romances, as you'll be able to tell soon. And I'm gonna put it in great fun. I'm gonna leave it in great fun. What are you gonna do about it? Anyway, The Outsiders. I read this book at the beginning. I think this was one of the first books I ever read this year. This is this is another reread that I actually read when I was like 12, which I probably shouldn't have, but I did for some reason. 
and I love The Outsiders. I think this is one of my weirdly favorite books, like favorite books that probably shouldn't be favorite books, but for some reason I just love them. So I'm gonna, it's in simping. I am simping. I am but a simp. Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief. This book was great fun. I read it around the same time as I read The Outsiders. I think I read them both in January. I'm gonna put it in just okay though, because I read the second one and I prefer the second one. The second one was chef's kiss. It was so much fun. I can't wait to continue with the series. I think I'm gonna continue like January or February. So stay tuned, haha. <laughs> But I'm gonna pop the second one in great fun. And I think they deserve some kind of separation between them. Nevernight by Jay Kristoff. Okay, so I really enjoyed this book when I read it. But I read it maybe six months ago. Maybe like July or something. And I don't know if I let the hype fool my enjoyment of it. So. I, what I loved the most about this book was every, what everyone hates. I love the footnotes. I think that's brilliant. I think it's such a fun way to tell a story and like include footnotes because it just it makes the world so expensive and I feel like Jake Kristoff has such a big world to explore and so, you know sometimes when there's so much world building that you kind of just feel like the author couldn't choose what kind of world building they wanted to do or they didn't really know how to explain it properly so they kind of just explained over explained to make up for it i don't think this is what happened in evernight i think jay christoph has a very good idea of the world he wanted to build and he explained it as much as he wanted to explain it i think and i assume more gets explained throughout the books However, I love that. I love the world building, love the footnotes. I, there's some things about it that are just, I, lately I've been hearing a lot of people talk about the whole scene where Mia basically gets like a boob job and like a face, not a facelift, but some kind of, she gets Botox probably, I don't know. Because being hot is part of an assassin's thing that they do I guess and that technically makes no sense and that's very male writer of Jay Kristoff to do that but this book also took me so long to read it took me so long to read it's I'm gonna put it in just okay I didn't think I had that much fun reading the book I just think I enjoyed it for the overarching kind of world that's built in the three suns and there's some mythology in there i think i'm gonna put it in just okay i'm not sure if i'm gonna continue with the series either so convince me to continue or convince me to not continue go ahead now we have a million junes by emily henry i love this book so much this is a Romeo and Juliet retelling honestly like Romeo and Juliet retellings this year popped off for me we have these violent delights here somewhere and we're gonna talk about that in a bit but they just chef's kiss chef's kiss this book was so sad the fabulism part of it was so cool Every, the like small town the flashbacks there were some things in the dialogue that felt kind of weird the main character in the love interest had a little bit of an age difference but i think it was like two years and they kept bringing it up and on one hand i felt like it was good that they kept bringing it up bringing it up because it's definitely something that people think about but on the other hand like shut up we don't we, we don't shut up <laughs> you know but honestly, like, chef's kiss. I love this book. If you like, if you like books dealing with grief, if you like fabulous, if you like Anna Marie McLemore, even though I haven't read a single book by Anna Marie McLemore, so I should shut up. But if you like Anna Marie McLemore, I think you should read A Million Junes. 
Yeah, I think you should read A Million Dreams. <laughs> I know Emily Henry has that new A Beach Read book. I do really want to read that because everyone's been loving it and it feels like a kind of romance that's a little bit deeper than just a romance that I would enjoy. So if you've read that and enjoyed the writing style, it's the same person, so I'm guessing you will enjoy a million dreams as well. A Court of Miracles. See, this is the same exact situation as Wanted Dead, Wanted Dead or In Love. Because this is a Les Mis retelling, kind of. This is an happening reimagining, kind of. Court of Miracles is set in... 1700? Oh my god, I forgot. No, 1800s Paris. Jesus Christ, I forgot when Les Mis was said dramatic. Is it 1800s? Anyway, the June Rebellion. It's not the French Revolution. I can get into this. Anyway, Whew, ooh, I got too heated about that for a second. Anyway, this is set in Paris. <laughs> and in this world, Paris has this gang underground there's a lot of gangs happening here and there's actually a lot of am i okay anyway paris has this criminal underground called the guilds and there's a bunch of guilds there's a guild for assassins there's a guild for i forget there's a guild for like merchants i think there's a bunch of fucking guilds and one of them is the like what is the guild that she's in called? I have no fucking idea. I forgot what the guild she's in is called. What is called? Oh my god. She's a thief. It's like, it's the, is it the guild of thieves? There's like... Ah, Ma'am. And Nina joins one of these guilds basically with the intent to save her sister from one of the other guilds. Her older sister was Elma was a character in Les Mis. So that's good so far. And and her plan is to use Cosette, the Cosette, to save her sister to kind of like for a bargain basically. Now what did I like about this book? I liked some of the Les Mis references. I thought like Les Mis, hi, I'm the Les Mis bitch in this house. So I liked some of the references. However, and I know this is gonna sound stupid. This was very straight. Let me, okay, I need my hands for this. So, <laughs> if you're a Les Mis fan and you haven't read The Court of Miracles yet, you're gonna be shook by what I'm about to tell you, love. Okay, so Nina has three different love interests. So it isn't even a triangle anymore, bitch, it's a square. One of them is, it's not Marius, because Marius doesn't exist in this book, thank God. But it's Marius, Marius adjacent. Have I called him Marius? Marius adjacent. It's the crown prince of France, which she meets through some honestly wild circumstances. And she keeps meeting through more wild circumstances. So that's love interest number one. Love interest number two is Montparnasse. Mont Mont I never had to say his name out loud. Montparnasse. Mont God, I haven't had French in years. The, this is him in the Les Mis movie. That's him. He's in another one of the guilds. I, that's my Les Mis stand eponym ship. And in Court of Miracles, that's my ship of cho choice as well. But then there's Andras. Like, what? <laughs> what? That I remember from my time in Les Mis Tumblr, there was some people who shipped... There was some content for Eponine and Andras. But it doesn't make sense. <laughs> what? I, what? And it just feels kind of homophobic, honestly. <laughs> like, by the author's note at the end, I got the feeling that the author was kind of the involved in the Les Mis faction, faction? In the Les Mis fandom? I tried to mix fandom and fanfiction in one, in one word. I felt like she was, try she was kind of involved in some way, at least. 
and for her to not give the people the people Angeras and Grantaire like we deserve I'm so what listen if you're in this stem you'll get what I'm coming from Wh where is it where is it where is it Grantaire was funny in this book Grantaire was iconic but where is the romance nowhere it was nowhere it, so this book made me mad and while Wanted Dead or In Love was funny this book mostly made me mad because it isn't really a Les Mis retelling it's kind of like picking up the characters from Les Mis and putting them into a different situation you know it's kind of like a, co a coffee shop AU but obviously not in a coffee shop <laughs> it's, it's a fantasy Les Mis AU is what this is so honestly I'm mad and I, it's a no for me. Am I gonna read the sequel as soon as it comes out? But it's still a no for me. Next. Oh my. The Hating Game. I have never hated anything more in my entire life. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Okay. Everyone knows what The Hating Game is about. It's about these two co workers who work for whatever they work for, magazine? I don't know work and they hate each other apparently for some weird reason but then they no longer hate each other f for some reason tell me that's not what the entire book that's the entire book tell me I'm lying anyway this book did one of my l most hated fat phobic tropes which is to oh it's so to be fat phobic because this person is a villain shut the fuck up just because a character is an evil character in the story and it's not a great part like this person this this was one of the bosses I think he's boss like they were it was like the oh it was a net in the publishing thing and two publishing things houses came together and he worked for one of the bosses from one of the publishing houses and she worked for the other one his boss was like really misogynistic he was shitty as fuck and he was a pig but just because he was all of that those things doesn't mean you get to make fat phobic jokes every time this character is on the page point dead point blank period Point blank period. Don't do it. Stop. Don't do it. The romance also made no fucking sense. Why did they hate each other? They hated each other because they were stupid. Why did they stop hating each other? No reason. They didn't have a reason to hate each other, so... I mean, I guess it was easy to not hate someone you don't have a reason to hate. I... I hated this... I... I hated this. I know everyone loves this and it's like quintessential adult romance, book to book. I don't care. Shoot me in the face. I hate this book. Next. I before before I go to the next book because ooh, I can't wait for the Hating Game movie to come out so that I can give that a one star as well. Moving on. I'm gonna skip what if it's us because honestly like a quarter of miracles, the hating game, I'm getting too mad. Whew. So we're gonna jump to Ungovernable. Whew. Okay, Ungovernable from Therese O'Neill, I think. This, I read Unmentionable, which was the first book in this series, I guess. And this is basically, the first book Unmentionable is how to be a lady in Victorian society is the victorian i think it's victorian society so basically how you dealt with periods how you how you dealt with romance all those things this book was about how to raise children in victorian society and they are written in kind of a self-help book so it's kind of, so it's, there's someone kind of like asking questions and the author is responding to them but it's really funny. Both of these books are really funny. The audiobooks are amazing. I love them both. 
read them. See a nice book. Beautiful. I do I put it in great fun? Yeah, it was great fun. Yeah. I, I think I liked Unmentionable a little bit more, but honestly I love them both. Just depending if you are more interested in the feminism kind of side of things or the child raising kind of side of things. Just choose choose whichever one you think sounds best. I need another good one before we move to what if it's us. So let's go with Nimona. I am simping. I am simping. I will I love Nimona. I don't own it yet. I read it on Kindle and I still don't have it, which is disrespectful of me. And I should be in the trash category, but I love Nimona. Nimona is about this woman, girl, about this girl, I guess, who goes to work for a villain. And she's so chaotic. She's like chaos personified. I love it. Nimona is amazing. The art style is so cute. It's very... Oh my god, I forgot her name. <gasps> oh my god, who am I? What kind of stan am I? Noelle Stevenson, of course, queen. It's very her art style. So read Nimona, watch She-Ra, be gay, do crimes. Okay, so my phone decided to stop filming and I didn't realize. So I had just filmed everything and now I'm having to refilm half of it, but it's fine, it's okay. Um, so if anything's different on my laptop, I apologize. I'm also gonna have to get up and like check periodically, so if the thing keeps changing, you know, whatever. Let's get going. We were gonna start talking about what if it's us by Becky Albertalli and Adam Silvera. I mm, enjoyed kind of Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda. I don't know if I've read anything else by Becky Albertalli, I don't remember. And I really loved They Both Die at the End and I enjoyed History is Only Left to Me by Adam Silvera. However, what if it says has to go in trash? It just has to go in trash. I am so sorry, but this, like, when people say theater kids are annoying, like I get it now. This, this is what they mean. This book is what they mean. I, there was a Hamilton reference in every single page. And there was a Dear Evan Hansen reference in every single page. Shut up. I love Hamilton as much as, as much as the next girl. I don't really like Dear Evan Hansen, but like, shut up. Just lower your voice. Go. I couldn't stand it anymore. This book was... And the characters were so annoying. The dialogue felt like adults, like proper adults writing teenagers and just trying to be hip and cool. Oh, I hate... This is this book is everything about... It. That are everything I hate about YA contemporary. It makes me mad. I think everyone knows what this is about. It's like two boys meet at a post office in New York and they have no chemistry nothing zero but they met and they fall in love or whatever they do if you're going to read this listen to the audiobook noah galvin plays one of the, he plays the most annoying of the or it's arthur and ben why do i remember their names god only knows but it's arthur and ben and noah galvin narrates the most annoying one which makes him a lot less annoying because i love noah galvin so if you want to read this go ahead and listen to the audiobook i think it's a much better way but like skip it all together to be honest okay next we have birthday by Meredith through so i read this book before i knew like literally right before like two days before i knew about the allegations against Meredith Russo that were made by her ex-partner ex-wife I'm not sure if they were married, so I'm just gonna say ex-partner. I will leave uh, an article about it down below so you can read about it as well. This book is about two best friends. One of them is a trans girl, one of them is a cis guy. And we follow them every single... Okay, quick break. I had to change the entire configuration of my phone. Like, I have to film with the front camera because it keeps stopping filming. And I don't know why. So I'm just filming with the front camera now. Sorry, 
Okay, so we were talking about birthday. Go, go back to talking. Let's go back to talking about birthday. It's about two best friends, and we follow them on their birthday. Like the story is always told on their birthday throughout the years, and we follow them while their friendship develops, and while the friendship falls apart, and while their romantic relationship develops, their crushes on each other develop, and it's really interesting. It re it really is a book that I think all parents should read. The, it's a, it left kind of a sour taste in my mouth after knowing what the author has done. Like, we don't want to support abusive people in this household. So, get your parent to read this. If you're a parent of teenagers, read this. But, like, download it illegally. I didn't say that, but, like, download it illegally. Next one before my phone stops filming again. Jesus Christ. And next one is Servant and Love. Okay, so... Everyone knows what this is about, which witch hunter romance thing. It was a mess. Loves, I'm sorry to say, this was a mess. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. However, it wasn't trash. Like, it was a fun mess. I think I'm gonna put it in, it's a no for me. But like, <laughs> no thoughts had empty, honestly. This book is no thoughts, head completely empty. Um don't listen to the audiobook the audiobook made it more stupid so if you're gonna read it read it physically i guess but like skip it heartstopper by alice oseman adorable i don't think it's simping i've only read the first one again i think i'm gonna put it in great fun it's great fun i really want to read alice oseman's other books so i can be caught up with the side characters and where these character the books where these characters are side characters if that makes sense i just want to get caught up with this series so yeah i recommend if you like graphic novels it's really soft adorable great fun next we have heroine by mindy mcginnis this is heavy this is it's spelled heroin with an e at the end but it's about heroin without you know um, this is about a girl who does a sport, I forget which sport it is, in high school and sports are really important in America or whatever. So when she gets injured in a car accident, she's really struggling to go back and she's really struggling to go back without her painkillers. So this kind of develops into a very bad drug addiction and heroin addiction. This isn't fun, like it, it wasn't fun. But I think I'm gonna put it in great fun just out of the fact that I really enjoyed it. I think this is like honestly, look up trigger warnings because obviously many. If you're okay reading about all that, definitely do. Next we have The One by John or Josh Mars. I never really know which one it is. Again, great fun. This is about this is kinda like 23 and Me meets Christian Mingle, Day Mingle, whatever that website is called. They had a baby. It's this book. So basically, some scientist found a DNA link that predicts your soulmate. I don't know. Something like that. <laughs> something fancy like that. I don't know. I'm just a psychology bitch. Um, and drama ensues. Do we follow five different characters, I think? All of them extremely dramatic. Like... Everything bad that happened, that could happen in this book, happens. Everything. It wasn't the most um, surprising. Like, I wasn't surprised by a lot of the reveals, I guess. But I was absolutely involved in the drama. And that's what matters. The Last Smile in Sunday City. This is kind of like a fantasy noir. I think this is just okay. It's a debut fantasy. It's set in this city where all the magic disappeared from it and so all these magical creatures are like slowly dying and are suffering and our main character is the most cynical man I've ever read about. So cynical but it was interesting. Next we have Scavenge of the Stars by Sarah Sim. Again this was just okay. I don't remember much about it. It's a Count of Monte Cristo retelling but a lot shorter. I love Tara Sims' other book, Timekeeper. Love it. And this, honestly, I don't remember much about it. It was just 
it was okay. I'm so scared that my phone will stop filming again, but I'm looking at it. Scavenge the Stars was all right. Behind the sun, above the moon. This is an anthology. <laughs> I'm so sorry about the lighting. This is an anthology with um, all non-binary characters. Like all anthologies, it had some stories that I really liked, some stories that I liked less. So I'm gonna put in just okay. However, I, it's all sci-fi stories. It was like futuristic-ish stories with non-binary characters, which is amazing to see. Oh, Ghost is in Kisses. So I'm gonna put in just okay again. We're having a just a, a just okay binge, I guess. This was a Beauty and the Beast retelling at a boarding school. A lot of rich people doing rich people things. There was some fantasy elements, but I didn't really enjoy them because I couldn't quite tell if it was just superstition, if it was actually fantasy. It kind of bordered fabulism, but it didn't, it wasn't developed enough to reach fabulism. It was okay. It, the romance was all right. It was just, it was okay. My Calamity Jane. This is the third book in the My Lady Janie's series thing. They're writing about Marys now, so I don't know if now we're supposed to say My Lady Marys. <laughs> My Calamity Jane is a western with werewolves. We all know all of these books are like retellings of history or other books that add a little a fantasy spice. They add a little bit of spice. It was great fun. I really enjoyed it. I know a lot of people didn't really like it because a lot of people don't really like westerns, but I think this was my second favorite. I think my favorite is still My Lady Jane, but I preferred this one to My Plain Jane, I think. From Blood and Ash, the booktube darling. Now, I don't know if I should put this in the great fun or the just okay. Like, it was fun, but this is a fantasy romance. And I'm reading the second book now and I, while I'm enjoying it, I still don't believe the romance, and that happens to me a lot. Like, that happens to me a lot, so I don't know if it's a me problem. But I'm still enjoying it, I still think it's funny, the dialogue is great, the banter between the characters, chef's kiss. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put in great fun. We'll see when I finish Kingdom of Flesh and Fire, we'll talk, and we'll see if I wanna lower from Blood and Ash or not. I'm gonna keep it in great fun for now. Now this is my most disappointing book of the year and the one I'm saddest to have to put in the It's a No From Me category. This is Knots and Crosses by Mallory Blackman. I never really understood when people talk about pacing of the books and they were like, oh, I didn't like the pacing of this book. I was like, what the fuck does that mean, mate? <laughs> I hated the pacing of the book so much. It felt like every time something exciting that I wanted to read about was about to happen, the book would be like, five years in the future. And I'll be like, love, love, no, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Stop. Don't do it. It's just, I just really hated the pacing of the book so much. But it kind of ruined the entire experience for me. I think I'm still going to continue in the series because I bought them while I was in the UK at a second-hand shop, second-hand bookshop, so, which is, I was just disappointed, honestly. I, I think this, maybe I'll, if I didn't have such high expectations for it, maybe I wouldn't have been so mad at the pacing, but because my expectations were so high, I was upset. I was upset is spaghetti. I was upset. Vengeful. Just okay. Vengeful is just okay. Vengeful felt like V. E. Schwab had too many ideas that she couldn't fit into one book and she couldn't choose which one she preferred so she went with all of them. I still really enjoyed the characters, the new characters that are in introduced, the new characters that we have POVs from. I still enjoyed, albeit less than in Vicious, the dual timeline, past and present storytelling, but it was just it felt convoluted, it felt kind of too much, it felt like it wasn't polished enough for what I expect from a V.E. Schwab book. It also felt like a carbon copy of Vicious, which is weird, I usually don't feel like, don't feel like that with sequels, but it just, it felt like Vicious all over again to me. Sorry! These violent, violent delights, this is going to be the new YA booktube darling simping from these violent delights always and forever this book was like 
for me. This is a Romeo and Juliet retelling with gangs set in 1920s Shanghai fishery monsters. This is how it's sold, but I like to think of it, think of it and I kind of like remove the gang's part. This is a West Side Story retelling in 1920s Shanghai with monsters. But that's just me. 1920s Shanghai. Romeo and Juliet. Gangs. Buzzwords. All of every single one of that word is a buzzword. I don't need to explain what it's about because if you don't know what are you doing, go read it right now. Just you just need to know it's amazing and I would die for Juliet. Dead on the floor for my child Juliet. This book didn't get a, get a five star for me just because I thought the dialogue was a bit stale. I don't know if that's the right word. I think the dialogue could have been better, but the descriptions of the world and just the prose, amazing, fantastic. And this is a debut from like a 21 year old. What the fuck. Next we have In a Holidays. In a Holidays is a Christina Lauren holiday book where this woman kind of gets stuck in the whole repeating the same day over and over again, but it's the entire holidays. I think that trope was kind of wasted on this book, like this book didn't take as much from that trope as it should, I think. So I'm just gonna put it in just okay. However, this was fun. I actually enjoy the romance, wild, and I kind got it. Maybe because it's childhood friends. Maybe that's why, but like, I got it anyway. It made sense to me. And it was cute, and it was a cute, like Christmas is over, but if you're still missing it, go read in the holidays. It was cute. Last, but, Oh, so not least, we have The Midnight Library by Ma Matt Haig. Same thing. This, okay. This book is about... This book is about me crying, is what this book is about, honestly. This book is about a woman... Oh, trigger warning for suicide, suicide ideation. This book is about a woman who commits suicide and she wakes up in this giant library where every single book in this library is a way her life could have gone if she had made a different decision. And this could have been like a really big decision, like who she was going to marry or just the tiniest, smallest decision ever. Man, man. I love the whole idea that no matter how small a decision is, it can still have so much impact and that idea is like stressed me out and I love it because it stresses me out so much. Like I went to Taco Bell today. What if I had gone to McDonald's and I had met my the love of my life at McDonald's? What if I had met my future partner, the person I was going to marry at McDonald's, but I went to Taco Bell? What am I gonna do now? I don't know because I didn't go to McDonald's, I went to Taco Bell, you know? <laughs> So this book just made me cry so, so much. It was beautiful. The, philos the philosophy behind it like really matched a lot of things that I really think about and that I obsess about. This, like, I never stay up reading books. I never read books in one sitting. I stayed up until like 4 a.m. reading this book in one sitting because I knew if I put it down, I wouldn't be emotionally ready to pick it up again for a while. So I just had to finish it. When I finished it, I went into the kitchen, opened the fridge, took my bo my water bottle out, stepped on the kitchen floor in front of the fridge, sitting on my water bottle and like crying. So that's what that book did to me. And that's the end of our tier list for 2020 reads. Thank you so much for coming on this journey of tier ranking my 20 2020 reads with me. If you've made it this far, drop a book emoji in the comments. That is so cheesy, that is so cheesy, sorry, 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 not sorry, anyway, yep, it was great having you, and I hope to see you again soon, bye!